Hi everybody, you're okay with average costs and marginal costs. You now want to look at total costs in the short run. We're going to draw these three curves in this diagram and understand why they are shaped the way they are. Let's take total fixed cost first. Remember what fixed costs are? Fixed costs do not vary with output at all. They are constant over a range of output. Which means the total fixed cost curve is going to be constant. It's going to be a horizontal line that looks like that. Constant over a range of output. Absolutely fine. Okay. The variable cost curve and the total cost curve is influenced heavily in shape by the law of diminishing marginal returns. Let's take the total variable cost curve first. It looks something like that. That is the total variable cost curve. Right, let's assume that wages are the only variable cost in the short run for a given firm. We know that the law of diminishing marginal ret returns states that in the short run, when we add a variable factor of production, which is labor, to a stock of fixed factors of production, initially, total output will rise and then it will start to fall. Yeah? So initially, when we hire workers and we pay them wages, there are productivity gains to be had. And that's what the first part of this curve is showing. So, initially, we hire some workers. So the variable cost in terms of wages that we are paying is quite high, and that's reflected by the level of cost initially. That's the initial cost to get that, the initial amount of labor. All right. It takes a, a certain amount of wages to pay those workers that we hire. But those workers are so productive that you don't need to increase wages by that much to get a much greater increase in output. So the idea here is when the curve becomes slightly more horizontal, shallower, that's the productivity gains that we are seeing. Output is increasing much greater than cost because initially there is underutilized capital and there are specialization gains to be made by adding more workers into the production process. So here we see that productivity is rising, i.e. output is increasing quicker than our variable costs are, quicker than wages are increasing, which means that total variable costs do not increase that much, output is increasing faster. Until we hit this part of the curve here, that's when we start to increase workers, 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 but we start seeing diminishing returns to the addition of those workers. There is um, an overutilization of our capital. The fixed factors of production, i.e. land and capital, become a constraint on production, and these workers start to lose productivity. Their productivity falls with respect to the workers that came before them which means that costs now start to increase quicker than output, which is exactly what's being shown here. So what we have initially, up until this point here, is increasing returns to labor, and then the law of diminishing returns set in, and we see decreasing returns to labor, falling productivity, hence why the curve becomes much steeper thereafter. Now the total cost curve. Well, remember, total cost is just total fixed cost plus total variable cost. That's the equation for total cost. If total fixed cost is constant, then the total cost curve is going to look exactly like the total variable cost curve, but just a bit higher. So it's going to look like this. Starting at total fixed cost, because at that point TVC is zero, so it's got to have to start at the total fixed cost point, which is positive at zero output. But because TFC is constant, it's going to follow the exact shape of the total variable cost curve. And of course, the vertical distance between the two curves represents the total fixed cost level. Okay, so that has a value of fixed cost if we just look at the, the difference between them. Okay? So that is total cost, total variable cost, and total fixed cost. Very easy to understand the shape. Just remember that the total variable cost curve is influenced due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. And the total cost will take that shape of the total variable cost curve uh, just a bit higher to reflect the constant nature of total fixed cost. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.